Tomo News presents Living on Mars. TV show gives a glimpse of life on Mars. The first home designed for humans to live in on Mars will be unveiled at an exhibition in the UK on November 10th. The exhibition of the show home ties in with a National Geographic docudrama that imagines colonists from Earth living on the red planet. The house would be constructed with Martian soil. The soil would be microwaved until it forms a brick. The bricks would be used to build the walls of an igloo-shaped dome, which would be around 10 feet thick. Recycled spacecraft parts, including a double airlocked entrance, would be used as the front door. Experts believe the dome would be able to withstand the Martian environment, including extremely low temperatures, micro-meteorite impacts, a thin atmosphere, and cosmic radiation. An underground area would contain facilities such as a dining hall and laboratory. The colony would expand module by module until it forms a city, termed Olympus Town. The exhibition at the Royal Observatory Greenwich in London coincides with the launch of the six-part docudrama Mars, which tells the story of an attempt to colonize Mars in the year 2033. China's Concept Martian Forest City Matt Damon sure could have used one of these concept Mars homes in 2015's The Martian. The concept from the Chinese Space Agency, Tongji University, and Stefano Boeri Architects would see a spaceship ferry a colony of massive pods containing forest cities from Earth toward Mars. Once the pods have touched down on the red planet, in Habitat reports they would use ecosystemic seeds to take root. This colony of forest city giant pods, dubbed New Shanghai, would also reportedly contain an infrastructure and an Earth-like atmosphere. Would you like to live in New Shanghai? NASA team practices living on Mars on volcano in Hawaii. A group of researchers are living on a volcano in Hawaii to simulate life on Mars as part of a NASA finance study, the Hawaii Space Exploration Analog and Simulation, also known as High Seas. The six people participating in the project started living inside a dome-shaped building on Mauna Loa Volcano last Wednesday and will be there for the next eight months. The dome sits at an altitude of 8,000 feet. The two-story building has a diameter of 36 feet and has about 1,500 square feet of space. Like real astronauts, the crew has to perform scientific work, including wearing spacesuits for excursions outside the dome. To simulate communication between Mars and Earth, crew members only have access to email, and each message is delayed by 20 minutes before being sent. Any reply will also arrive with a 20-minute delay. Years from now, when trained astronauts travel to Mars, they will have to spend about 500 days on the planet. The goal of the High Seas Project is to study how well people can live, work, and get along while isolated from civilization. Nonprofit group plans permanent Mars colony. The race to Mars has begun. SpaceX chief executive Elon Musk says the company will send people to Mars by 2024 and he will reveal plans for colonization in September. Meanwhile, a nonprofit group also aims to establish permanent Mars colonies, sending the first group of astronauts by 2026. After Earth, Mars is the most habitable planet in our solar system. It has similar natural resources, a temperate climate, and an adaptable gravitational pull on its surface. Nonprofit foundation Mars One has developed a plan to colonize Mars. It has already selected six teams of four individuals, and the first team will begin training next year. In 2020, Mars One will launch a communications satellite to the Red Planet. Between 2022 and 2025, a series of rovers will land and assemble livable habitats, which include a life support unit and a communication system. The living unit will house an inflatable living section and an airlock used by astronauts when leaving the sealed, habitable settlement. The unit will include materials for the construction of rooms, floors and electrical outlets and comes equipped with showers and kitchen areas. Additional units will arrive and be constructed as new teams join the colony. Attached to the living unit is the environmental control and life support system. The system will feed nitrogen and argon gas extracted from Mars's atmosphere into the habitable space as inert gases. Thin, film solar photovoltaic panels will be included to generate electricity. 
The life support system will be equipped with heating units to boil and extract water from ice in the planet's soil. Once the astronauts have landed, it will also be in charge of water purification and removal of carbon dioxide from the living unit atmosphere. The colony's communication system will include two orbiting satellites, one around Mars and one around the Sun. The satellite orbiting Mars will only be interrupted when Mars is positioned between it and Earth. To counter the lapse, the second satellite orbiting the sun will intercept and relay the transmission, allowing almost 24/7 communication with Earth. The colony will lose transmission only when the sun is between Mars and Earth, and Mars is between its satellite and Earth simultaneously. Mars One will launch a team of four members every two years, starting in 2026. It will take a year after departing Earth for a team to land on the surface of Mars. The organization hopes to train and send new teams even after the initial six have colonized the planet. Even in space, you have to eat your greens. NASA hopes its astronauts will be able to keep up their veggie intake on future missions to the Moon or Mars, thanks to a greenhouse project it's working on with the University of Arizona. The prototype lunar greenhouse is cylindrical, measuring 18 feet in length and more than 8 feet in diameter. The garden uses a hydroponic system in which water enriched with nutrient salts flows continuously through the roots of the plants. Carbon dioxide exhaled by astronauts can be absorbed by the plants. In return, the plants produce oxygen for the astronauts through photosynthesis. The exchange forms a bioregenerative life support system. NASA's Veggie Plant Growth System was the first fresh food growth experiment on the International Space Station. The space agency hopes to provide a more sustainable approach to long-term exploration on the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Martian atmosphere could be used to make oxygen and rocket fuel. Mars may one day be able to sustain a human outpost with the help from the planet's own environment. 96% of the Martian atmosphere is made up of carbon dioxide. Researchers believe this abundant resource, combined with the cold Martian temperature and non-thermal plasma, can produce oxygen and carbon monoxide. Local production of these gases on Mars could, in theory, help sustain an outpost or even colony on the red planet with oxygen, and help with the deeper exploration of the solar system using carbon monoxide as fuel. But that being said, it's all speculation for the moment. So it looks like we won't be joining Matt Damon anytime soon. NASA's making bumblebee. NASA researchers are working on robot bees. According to new NASA plans for Martian exploration, robot Mars bees would use a rover as a mobile base for operations and charging. They can stay airborne for four to six hours. The space agency says the Mars bee is the size of a bumblebee, with a wingspan similar to a cicada. According to NASA, the low Martian gravity reduces the power requirements for generating lift. It's because of this, researchers have incorporated a flapping wing design with a torsional spring to absorb wasted energy. The Mars bees will also be equipped with sensors and wireless devices. They'll use these to further map and sample the red planet, as well as search for methane gas, a key indicator of life, and farts. Lockheed Martin unveils Mars Base Camp. Space engineering giant Lockheed Martin has released the concept design for a base camp that will orbit Mars. Lockheed Martin unveiled its Mars base camp design on May 18th with hopes that it will put astronauts into orbit in 2028. The six-person spacecraft will have a living quarters, laboratory, solar arrays to generate power, and more. The Mars Base Camp relies on near-term technologies, equipment already proven or currently in development, including two Orion capsules currently being tested by NASA. The two capsules will link up with the larger habitat and laboratory modules. One of the Orions will also act as the brain of the vessel, providing navigation and communication systems, while the other acts as a backup. Lockheed Martin plans to launch the spacecraft in pieces to be assembled in space around the Moon. With the base camp in orbit, astronauts would be able to better explore the red planet. They would be able to control drones and rovers on the surface of Mars in real time, as opposed to the 20-minute delayed connection currently used between Mars and Earth. Later, modules could be added to allow astronauts to land on Mars and head to the base camp for the return trip to Earth. The future is near. Power up. 
NASA is testing a nuclear fission reactor prototype that could enable long-term stays on the surface of the Red Planet. The first humans on Mars will need to be able to generate power to transform the planet's water and carbon dioxide into liquid oxygen and fuel. Addressing this concern is the Kilo Power Project, a nuclear power system that comes with a uranium reactor core, which uses fission to generate electricity. The system can generate one kilowatt of electricity, which can power a toaster to 10 kilowatts, which can light up to 100 light bulbs. Four to five 10 kilowatt units will be needed to power the habitat charging vehicles, generate safe drinking water, and oxygen. The months-long testing for the kilopower prototype began in November at the Department of Energy National Security site in Nevada. Though a flight test is at least six to eight years away, if all goes well, the technology could be ready by the mid-2020s to early 2030s. There's ice on Mars. Sheets of ice exist close to the Martian surface. New research published in the journal Science looked at data from spacecraft on eight locations on Mars and found large swaths of ice. The sheets are said to be located near the surface as well as close to depths of 100 meters. Researchers also found cliffs made up of water ice. According to science, the ice sheets could be useful for future missions to Mars. In other words, water might just be within our reach on Mars. How cool is that?